Hi, and we're back to a new episode of Global Voices on Hard Rhythm TV in New Orleans in the HRS 2023. Sometimes in electrophysiology we get into difficult situations and we need to think different to find a solution. And to enlighten us about bipolar ablation, I'm joined by my good friend, Dr. Piotr Futima from Poland. He's founder of the Courses Enterprise, right? Welcome, Piotr. Welcome to the uh, Hello, show. everyone. Thanks for having me. It's great having you here. Why don't we start <coughs> with the basics? Let's start with the basics, with the biophysics of the ablation. How bipolar ablation is different for the other energies that we use? Basically, you take another catheter, which you connect instead of a return electrode. You need uh, some kind of equipment for that. Uh, and once, you, once you're there, you can deliver uh, a radio frequency lesion when the alternating current travels between both tips of these two ablation catheters. It's pretty useful when your substrate is relatively intramural, when you cannot get this, get this with uh, classic unipolar ablation. So uh, this is the basic. <laughs> all right, all right. And how does this work? Is there a special workflow, a connector? that you have to do some adaptations to use the catheter? Uh, there are different uh, workflows. Um, some centers, small centers, use it in a custom-made cables. Uh, in Europe right now, we have uh, some generators which can do that. Uh, also, you, uh, you are able to uh, connect it with a dedicated device in Poland. It's not available for US, uh, however, there is, as far as I know, there is an option of uh, compassionate use when uh, there can be like a very rapid uh, FDA approval per particular case, but we did not test it so far. Uh, so there are options. Uh, many centers rely of, uh, on their own uh, custom-made connections. Uh, you can also adapt some connectors from uh, companies like uh, T-Connector in order to connect the tip of the catheter uh, instead of the dispersive patch. So there are ways. Uh, some are more straightforward than others, okay. but it always d all, all depends on the situation and on the center, what's your policy. Uh, and the main, um, the main role is the patient, right? Because... Uh, you never know when you're gonna need uh, this kind of tool because usually it appears during the case that the substrate is uh, intramural. When you deliver prolonged unipolar ablation lesions, uh, but there's still inducibility or, or recurrence of clinical arrhythmia. So it's very, very uh, flexible situation sometimes, but which appears during the case that you need such a tool. So you need to be prepared to use it and to have this option available. Yes, it's very important to be prepared if you are like a um, quite large VT center. Yeah. I think that you are uh, aware that some of these arrhythmias are not ablatable using classic approach or some of them may require really extensive ablation and yeah. really extensive unipolar ablation may increase risk of complications at many different levels. You can get steam pops, which are relatively rare if you have a scar, because the penetration of radio frequency current is relatively poor. Uh, however, you can have like char formation or something if your ablation lesion is really extensive. Another advantage of bipolar ablation is that you are using relatively lower emergency okay. settings. So uh, yeah, it can be pretty useful. Any particular issues about the temperature impedance, mm -hmm. what to be careful about? Well, uh, basically, if you use like two open irrigated catheters for bipolar ablation, your uh, baseline impedance will be higher. And basically, it reflects the transmural impedance because there is one display, and this is the impedance which is measured between both tips of ablation catheter. Uh, it can help to guide your ablation because uh, you can notice for example, a decrease of impedance, which is basically more prominent for bipolar ablation uh, when compared to unipolar ablation. So it's not, not surprising if you have uh, impedance drop above 20, sometimes 30 ohms. Sometimes if you use modified irrigant, you, your impedance drop will be even more prominent because you will start at even 
more elevated impedance levels because your tip, both tips of ablation catheters are surrounded with low ionic coolant, so sometimes it's even 200 ohms at baseline. But during the lesion formation, it should decrease. It can help you definitely to guide your ablation lesion set. And temperatures, of course, um, it's difficult to monitor contact force tracking for both catheters using equipment that we have. Uh, so the temperature rise from the tip of ablation catheter can somehow reflect the contact between the catheter tip and the lesion of your catheter you use as a return electrode. And getting there, we have to talk about complications. Yes. How to avoid them? How what do you have to be careful in this kind of situation? Because you're using energy from both sides. Actually, uh, most complications I am aware of were, are not associated with uh, bipolar de delivery itself. Uh, but with the presence of a second relatively stiff ablation catheter, sometimes without contact force monitoring. So, in my opinion, there is some kind of increased risk of perforation just because you have a second catheter which you need to handle and uh, which doesn't provide like contact sensing. That's when, that's why sometimes eyes can be useful to track the, uh, to track the contact, what is happening with this second electrode. Uh, and of course, uh, radio frequency delivery itself uh, can uh, be a cause for complications, which, to be honest, I did not experience yet. Uh, however, there are some reports when you are very far away from the base, you can, if, you, if your patient has like a myocardial bridge, in ca it can lead to occlusion of a vessel. There are some reports about that. I did not experience such complication uh, in any of uh, my patients, but it can occur. I think as long as you are close to the base, I, I think that you are relatively safe. And of course, there is some workflow regarding position of coronary arteries. You need to uh, position both of your catheters in order to provide safe distance from the ablation electro uh, from the coronary artery. Uh, if you are ablating interventricular septum, uh, there is a um, there is a uh, his conduction system. So. You should be aware of it. Sometimes the scar is so so broad that um, it's basically anticipated to cause an AV block with any kind of thermal energy. But it 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 should be like uh, at least acknowledged that okay. this can happen. Any particular position or location? Well, I think the septal position uh, it's more most natural for bipolar ablation. Um, uh, but of course, if you deal with LV summit, you need you sometimes you need to position the second catheter either in the, for example, pulmonic cusp, which is quite good position, uh, or in the coronary uh, vessel, coronary vein. Uh, in such situations, the use of large tip electrodes like 8 millimeter tip or term, even 10 millimeter tip can be useful in order to decrease the baseline impedance. Excellent, excellent. Well, firing from both sides. Yeah. to achieve a better result we, and we can call it this way everything for the patient's benefit yeah. right and these are challenging situations with uh, challenging substrates yeah it's good to acknowledge this technology as well as with other technologies such as alcohol ablation or wire mapping or intra intramural ablation i think it's it's uh, the most important taking point should be that these patients are there these ablations are complex and sometimes we just need a better tools. Excellent. Thank you for spending some yeah. time with us in Global Voices. Thank you so much. Have a nice Congress. It was great having you here. And don't forget to have an amazing day.